Hi, everybody. It's time for another update. Omicron is sweeping the globe and uh, beginning to sweep this nation. And uh, everyone is trying to figure out what to do for travel plans as the holidays are upon us. And so let me start sharing my screen with you and I will let you know what's been going on. So as most of you know, there is a persistent global rise. Uh, hotspots are in Europe and the US and South Africa. Cases are rising all over in the US and California. Hospitalizations are rising in the US and California. Vaccination is at a daily rate of 1.53 million in our country. And 70% of Californians are fully vaccinated, which is great. Uh, mortality is rising again in the US with a slight decrease in California. So I'm gonna start with the variants because everyone has a lot of questions about Omicron as expected. And you can see this is the first time that this graph has significantly changed in many weeks. Uh, for a long time, Delta was 99.9% .9 of all cases in the US. And now you can see this rapid shift over the last week and a half really. Uh, and now Omicron variant is over 73% of all US cases. And you can see that uh, there is a varying proportion uh, depending on the different regions in the country. But as of yesterday, all 50 states uh, within the United States uh, have had cases of Omicron. So there is no state that is not affected by this variant. And if you want to look close to home here in Santa Clara County, you can see that we have 59 cases and uh, Delta variant is still the uh, by and large majority of all cases that we're seeing, but we will likely see that shift rapidly in the coming weeks. This is uh, interesting data uh, that confirms earlier suspicions where uh, cases of Omicron were less likely to end up in the hospital versus cases of Delta. This is an actual study that has come out uh, confirming that this is the case. However, uh, what is important in the conclusion of this study is that it's not possible really to know whether this difference is due to inherent differences in virulence, how severe this virus is, or whether it's due to higher population immunity in November in regions like South Africa and the UK compared to earlier in the year. So uh, it remains to be seen when we look at different populations with different vaccination rates, how this plays out. This is an interesting study, uh, sort of interesting data coming out of the division of the National Health Laboratory Service in South Africa. Once you are hospitalized uh, with Omicron, then you know what is what do we see? Well, if you can see that of those patients that were that died in the hospital from COVID nineteen in this uh, time period in South Africa, when you look at vaccination status, thirteen percent of those patients were fully vaccinated. 87% were unvaccinated or not fully vaccinated. So you can see that vaccination certainly does make a difference. However, it is not fully protective against hospitalization and death. And you can see that in these patients, uh, when you look at their vaccinations, none of them had boosters. And so this really speaks to uh, how important boosters may be in uh, dealing with the Omicron variant. This is sort of confirmed here in this uh, study. You can see after the second dose of Pfizer uh, vaccine effectiveness, you can see is still not that great when you look at Omicron versus Delta. However, when you look after uh, the Pfizer booster, that vaccine effectiveness comes right back up. And you can see that how this plays out is that people with two shots, uh, uh, and their antibody levels against the original virus versus Omicron, you can see the very large difference. But then people with two shots and a booster, you can see that once again, people have 25 times more protection against Omicron. And so again, really speaking to how important booster doses are in protecting against Omicron. So with having said all that, let's dive right into vaccination levels. When you look at the US, we have finally broken the 60% mark, still lagging behind many other countries. You can see China has uh, really done quite well, 82.6%, and we have a ways to go to catch up with countries like that. When you look at how many people in the US are fully vaccinated, 
over 200 million are fully vaccinated and now over 63 million have received a booster dose. You can see that in the age over 12, over 70% of our population, and in the age over 65, 87.7% of the population. When you look at booster doses, however, only 30% of the population that is fully vaccinated has received a booster dose. So a lot of improvement can be found uh, in the coming weeks in this population, which hopefully we will see. When you look at the uh, rate of administered doses, unfortunately, you can see that uh, we spiked up at the beginning of December, but have kind of faltered over the last uh, couple of weeks. So hopefully we see this rate of administered doses going up. And you can see that reflected in this new reported people vaccinated, when you look at the additional dose of boosters, this is slowly going up at the end of this graph. But when you look at the actual uh, one dose to fully vaccinated, uh, one to two doses of vaccine, these are not rising at the same rate. And we need to work on getting more people uh, vaccinated. When you look at this broken down by state in the US, you can see that unfortunately, Idaho and Wyoming and Alabama are still lagging, uh, still holding out in the percentage of all residents vaccinated. But happily, we see some significant improvements in Mississippi uh, in their rate of residents being fully vaccinated. And in West Virginia, we have uh, an increasing rate of those residents being fully vaccinated. So we are seeing some improvements in some states. When you look at California, you can see that we're pretty stable as far as how many vaccine doses are being administered. Uh, no major improvements in the last two weeks there. When you look at how many of our residents are fully vaccinated, we are doing quite well, 70% fully vaccinated, but we can do better. And when you look at this vaccination status by group, you can see that unfortunately in the 65 and over group, we are still only at 79.9% compared to the US population of 87.7%, so lagging in that age group. And here you can see that at Santa Clara County, uh, we are doing really well. Over 91.9% uh, .9 of the population over age 17 is fully vaccinated. And then you can see the percent of booster eligible residents is close to 50% in our county, so doing quite well. And when you look at the age over uh, 65, we're doing really well in that age group as well in our county with 95% of those people being vaccinated. So we'll, let's take a look at cases now. Global cases continue to rise, as I mentioned. And what this looks like in a graph form is a steady increase in this fourth surge of the pandemic, 13% increase over the last two weeks globally. Uh, and when you look at this as far as a map, you can see that the hotspots show really high numbers in Europe, increasing numbers in the US, South Africa, also, Canada and Australia are increasing over the last two weeks. When you look at selected countries, what's really interesting to see on this graph for me is that you see the United States here with our uh, increasing uh, bar graph, our line graph here, and you see South Africa, and they have already started coming down. So a very rapid rise due to Omicron variant, and now they're already coming down. So perhaps the descent as uh, rapid as the ascent, and hopefully we will see that in other countries. When you look up at the very top of this uh, line graph at Denmark, you are seeing that same exponential increase in cases and now a very rapid descent off of that peak. Hopefully we'll see this soon in many other countries. When you look at US cases, you can see we are still in the rise. Uh, and you can see that we have had an increase in this last 14 days. When you look at hotspots, you can really see that these hotspots are shifting back to look like what our map looked like at the very beginning of the pandemic. New York is again the epicenter of, of cases. You have over 11,000 cases per day on average right now in New York City. Uh, compare this to about 5,000 cases per average in Chicago and only 293 cases on average in Santa Clara County. So very similar to the beginning of the pandemic where there was an epicenter of cases in, in New York City. And this probably reflects the 
uh, travel of Omicron variant uh, from Europe to the US as uh, where it's starting, we will likely see this spread rapidly. When you look at California, uh, you can see that it has been rising. There's a 31% increase over the last two weeks. And this is really even um, before we have seen the full brunt of Omicron. We, this is Delta cases rising as well as the beginning of an Omicron uh, variant surge. And so we will likely see this rise uh, more in the coming weeks. When you look at the cases in LA and San Francisco, just in this last week is when you can really see that exponential increase in the graph going up. And this is uh, really just over the last week, week and a half. You can see in Santa Clara County, we have not seen this really rapid peak hit us yet. And similarly in San Mateo, you see a slight rise, but not that rapid peak yet. If you look at Stanford, uh, keep in mind that the last time that these cases were uh, documented was on 1212. And so we, again, have not seen any sort of uh, rapid increase from the Omicron variants in this data thus far, but there was uh, just sort of a steady rise in cases in the Stanford patient population. Uh, I'm sorry, Stanford student population. And you can see that uh, same slight elevation in the Stanford faculty, postdocs, and staff as of 12 12 21. When you think about the pediatric population, uh, as I mentioned last report, what's interesting uh, about the Omicron variant in cases in South Africa in the Gauteng province is this risk of admissions, hospitalizations, in an age group that we really hadn't seen before, this less than five year old age group. And you can see that there's this exponential sharp increase uh, in those cases. And you can see that in both of these uh, uh, delineations here, as far as age group and epidemiologic week. And so the question is, is this going to play out in uh, nations outside of South Africa? As I had mentioned last time, the vast majority of uh, parents of these patients were not vaccinated. And when you look at the US, it really is too soon. It's too early to see whether this is going to show a sharp increase or not, as it's just starting to affect our patient population. You can see that overall, there was a 5% increase in the accumulated number of child cases as of the time that this report was documented, which was 1216 on this website. Uh, in the time since then, just basically in the last uh, week, pediatric cases in the US have jumped 32%. And so that's just cases. And of course, there's a delay when we look at hospitalization, whether that's in pediatric or adults. And so we'll have to really see whether this uh, holds true that this causes an increase in hospitalization rate in this age population. When we look overall at hospitalizations in the US, this continues to rise. And when you look at hospitalizations in California, you can start seeing a slight rise, but nowhere near the exponential rises that New York City is currently seeing. And in Santa Clara County, uh, again, just a slight rise. And in San Mateo County, really only a plateau right now, not even a, a rise of any sort. When you look at San Francisco, you can see that the hospitalizations remain elevated, but really stable over the last two weeks. So again, we're, I think it's gonna take a little bit of time to see any sort of sharp rise in this from the Omicron variant itself. When you look at mortality nationally, unfortunately we are increasing our deaths per day. When you look at California, uh, we have a sort of uh, jagged, steady, slight decrease overall in mortality. And when you look at Santa Clara County, uh, this is just sort of steady at 20 deaths over the last two weeks. So, um, I'm sorry, 22 deaths over the last two weeks. So uh, when you look at death cases and deaths according to vaccination status, just to remind you, unvaccinated people are five times as high to contract the virus and 13 times as high to die from this virus. This is an interesting data I just wanted to share out of Israel. This is just published in New England Journal. You can see uh, the effect of a booster campaign on new cases. So you can see that in July, there is starting to uh, show the steady rise in cases. You can see the initiation of the booster campaign. And then as more of the population became boosted, 
you can then again see a steady decrease in cases. So boosters do really appear to be necessary uh, at this point in the pandemic. And uh, what else is breaking news as of just yesterday, uh, wanted to let all of you know that the FDA has authorized the first easy to use pill to treat COVID-19. Uh, and what this is is a five day regimen in the study that was done, it prevented high risk people from developing severe illness when, within, when taken within a few days of symptom onset and that uh, prevented hospitalization and death. So uh, this could be a really important game changer in our fight against the pandemic. And I'm really happy to, to see that the FDA has authorized this. We'll have to see how this plays out, whether this is as important as vaccination, not as important, um, and really in the end, how rapidly we can get access to this because uh, the caution is that this really is not going to be widespread uh, and available until maybe sometime. With that, I will uh, stop sharing my screen and I hope again that this was helpful for all of you and I hope all of you have a happy and healthy and safe holiday season. I'll see you next year.